the second Corinthians chapter 12 verses 7 to 21 that's what we're going to be reading for the scripture today second Corinthians chapter 12 verses 7 through 21 I'll give you a moment to turn there And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. I am become a fool in glorying. Ye have compelled me. For I ought to have been commended of you, for in nothing am I behind the very chiefest apostles, though I be nothing. Truly the signs of an apostle were wrought among you in all patience, in signs and wonders and mighty deeds. For what is it wherein ye were inferior to other churches, except it be that I myself was not burdensome to you? Forgive me this wrong. Behold, the third time I am ready to come to you. And I will not be burdensome to you, for I seek not yours, but you. For the children ought not to lay up for the parents, but the parents for the children. And I will very gladly spend and be spent for you, though the more abundantly I love you, the less I be loved. But be it so, I did not burden you. Nevertheless, being crafty, I caught you with guile. Did I make a gain of you by any of them whom I sent unto you? I desired Titus, and with him I sent a brother. Did Titus make a gain of you? Walked we not in the same spirit? Walked we not in the same steps? Again, think ye that we excuse ourselves unto you? We speak before God in Christ, but we do all things, dearly beloved, for your edifying. For I fear lest when I come I shall not find you such as I would, that I shall be found unto you such as ye would not, lest there be debates, envyings, wraths, strifes, backbitings, whisperings, swellings, tumults, and lest when I come again my God will humble me among you, and that I shall bewail many which have sinned already, and have not repented of the uncleanness and fornication and lasciviousness which they have committed. Amen. It'd be good to pray again. (laughs) Lord, on my heart, phrases and context, Lord, of this passage. Prepare us, Lord, to receive your word. Open our hearts. Challenge us, Lord, and we commit this time to you. We ask that you would speak in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, This sermon today is brought to you by the number four and the letter U. For you. For you. On my heart in the season of our church is... A phrase that rings out um, and it comes again and again in this passage. This passage deals in its context with some very difficult things. It deals with motive. It deals with money. It deals with morals. If you want some three M's, there they are. (laughs) Money, motive, and morals. And those are three important things before the Lord. And this is the um, context 
that I have been led to this morning. Paul has to write a very tough letter in 1 Corinthians, and then again now, in hoping that things would change, a, a messenger of Satan is present to, to buffet him. And, and, and yet, God's grace was sufficient. And in all of this, the apostle pours out his heart and motive in that it was always a, a for you motive, seeking not yours, but you. Um, the desire to edify and build up and do all things, dearly beloved, for your edifying, uh, verse 19. And so out of this passage rings this motive of the heart of the Apostle Paul, especially as he had to deal with money and morals, uh, this 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 letter and number for you, for you, for you, for you. You could put that at, on a T-shirt. You know, I think kind of an interesting conversation piece. For you, for you. I wonder if that could be on your T-shirt today and you could echo this desire, this heart, and that is to be a for you Christian. Wouldn't that be, what, what an atmosphere. If everyone had that T-shirt on now, better than the T-shirt, <laughs> would be the footprints of a life lived for you, a life lived for others, for others. Uh, what a motto. Others, Lord, yes, others, let this my motto be. Uh, let me live for others that they might live for thee. Uh, twisted of that little verse or little poem is others, Lord, yet, yes, others, let this their motto be, let others live for others like me or let 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 me live for others that others might live for me uh, this is a twisting this is kind of the background of what what was being accused and what was going on and so Paul takes on this with this theme of be a for you Christian if I can receive any any challenge uh, from this our church is at a wonderful time in history um, and I am reminded of whitewater rafting in northern Wisconsin. And most of the trip was boring, but then we came to the exciting part. You could hear it coming. <laughs> it was downstream a bit. Uh, there were some waterfalls. There were some rapids. There was the exciting part. You heard about it. That's why you signed up for this one. But again, most of it was luli, luli tooling along, you know, and, and boring. Then we got to the spot where the guides uh, put everybody over to the side, and then we walked ahead to see what was coming. And then in not three, but two rafts, um, all the people went for this exciting portion. And then, then there was the opportunity to go up and get the third raft, and the elite for round twosie would go back and go through it again. And, and so twice I went through it, as you can imagine. <laughs> and the guide, as we walked and previewed, uh, told exactly what was going to happen and exactly what should happen. That we will paddle to the center of the tongue that goes down the small waterfall of of, you know, seven to ten feet, I would guess, in my memory, and go right down the center tongue of that, uh, and then, then, then we'll go right to the left of Volkswagen Rock, and then we'll go through the, he had another name for the chute uh, that would be there, and all would be well. And so, you know, I mean, this is exciting. You're adrenaline. It's going, man. It's pumping. And, and, and you're listening now in the two rafts. You're in, you're in one. One's behind you. And you're the first raft. And paddle left, paddle left, paddle left, paddle left. And, and right down the middle of the tongue of that small waterfall you went. And right to the left of Volkswagen Rock you went. And right down the, the chute and off down into the pool that was just wonderfully uh, there at the bottom. And everybody uh, wonderfully had a great time and got out. Uh, just great. And then the elite went back up and in and, and a guide. And there was a conspiracy among the people there going back. And they just said that was 
that was a great ride, but it was kind of boring. Uh, how could we make it a little more exciting? <laughs> And, and, and the conspiracy, you know, concluded without the knowledge of the guide that we would not listen to the guide. And, and paddle left, paddle left hard meant paddle right. And go over the middle of the tongue meant go over the side of the tongue. And um, uh, uh, missing Volkswagen rock meant crashing into Volkswagen Rock and having this guy fly this way. This never more excitement that I could ever imagine was this uh, scene of whitewater rafting. It was memorable in my mind. And, and that, that guy, he just knew what to do. And some hung on. I remember hanging on. I think my brother fell over. And, and, and this, this guy went over here and picked this guy up and brought him in and went over here and picked this guy up and threw a paddle to that guy or handed a paddle to that guy. And we all somehow still made it safely uh, through the rapids. Um, listen to the guide. Listen to the guide. I have a thought that there are a couple last paddles being taken. They are important paddles. <laughs> very important paddles. And they'll set a very important course. Uh, this day, we are doing that. Let us all listen to the guide of lessons that we can pull out from the scripture that would be a blessing to us so that we could, like the Apostle Paul, be a for you Christian. The first big lesson that I get throughout all of this is the word humble. And the concept to, to, to humble yourself dealing with motive is so important, so important. Paul says, and lest I should be exalted above measure. We say, how, how could that be a problem with the, you know, with that, with this godly man, this uh, this this little conduit of God's word and God's blessing, uh, the apostle? How how could that be an issue? Well, he had abundance of revelation. He even took a trip to heaven and saw things unspeakable, and and and, and he 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 writes of these things and. And, and then you think if there was this great messenger of God to come and lead people to Christ and start a local church, you would think that everything would go wonderful, right? And smooth. No, read the book of 1 Corinthians and see how things really went. And then 2 Corinthians, a little better, but not all better. And, 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 and there's this uh, uh, messenger of Satan to buffet me. Now, people have taken stabs at this and people have... Uh, 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 you, uh, you know, have have determined what it is, and then conjectured what it is, and and I had that all figured out until I studied it some more. And now, now I'll just throw it on you, but it could have been, you know, a, a thorn in the flesh, as in some physical infirmity that 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 humbled the apostle Paul. Maybe an impediment of speech. Some suggest maybe an eye issue of his physical eyes, and talking to the Galatians of the large letters that he had written with his. Uh, own hand and and the pluck your eyes out and given them to me uh, passage uh, it could have been that this um, messenger of Satan uh, is is literally and used uh, many times in scripture the word messenger it's the word angel and of Satan would be a demon and this could very well refer to a demonically possessed uh, individual or individuals that uh, were afflicting the message of the Apostle Paul and causing the greatest thorn in his side. And that was that people would be turned from the message and turn from following Christ and, and not be living for the Lord. And that was the greatest pain. And I thought, well, that's an interesting thought there of the, of the, of the possibility of the indwelling of, 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 uh, of a, a demonically charged uh, ringleader to the Corinthian conspiracy that Paul had to painfully uh, uh, correct again and now again, and uh, in, in how he was buffeted by this and the ill treatment that was particularly assessed in attacking him in this. And you read some of these uh, um, 
painful assaults that are present here and some of the words uh, that are that are present and some of the sins that are present and you can you could just hear the hiss of the enemy from anyone seriously going forward for God and and, and the Apostle Paul unveils his for you in the sense that trials are are specifically tailored for you um the apostle paul in humility shares this it, it's a strange thing you would think uh the better things would go the more power he would have the more exalted he would be and and then we realize again with god it's just the absolute opposite let him that is greatest among you become the servant you know and and uh, let there be dust through the feet of of serving, not a crown of leadership and headship, and 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 and, and so it's just kind of the opposite thing. And in the temptation that God knew of the apostle Paul's heart uh, would, would be that there is a need of humbling. Paul says uh, that I would like to have this cleared up and have you really repent and really live for God so that I would not be humbled again. Uh, and he, he gives this, this thought uh, that God is, God is uh, able or my God will, will humble you uh, lest uh, when I come again, my God uh, will humble me if there is not this living for God. This is the way it's supposed to go, but but God has shown me that I'm not going to take an ounce of glory from it. It is God. It is God. So whatever this thorn in the flesh it was, uh, it, it truly reminds us that God knows exactly what we need, each one of us. And hand tailors, a beautiful passage of scripture that we can all uh, uh, be thankful for that we do have problems and difficulties and trials and it's and it's on the one earthly surface a messenger of Satan to buffet us and we can see like Job that 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 Satan's coming and he's throwing his darts and arrows and attacks and everything like that but then there's this behind the surface that God is allowing this. And we could say, you know, God, why? God, what is going on? And why is it going on? And, and, and we may not get the answer, but we can know the, the answer is that God is doing something special. God is doing something big. God is doing something deep. And, and God's working. God's moving. And God has a purpose. And God has a plan that you may not even understand. And it, it maybe he's working on you. And maybe he's working through you. And maybe uh, thousands of years later, people are going to pick up the book of Job or pick up this passage in Corinthians and hear the next one, that God's grace is sufficient for us, ab abundantly sufficient. For whatever we would go through, God's grace is abundantly sufficient. Wow. In fact, if you want to really uh, get the twist and really get the reversal of this, that Paul would respond as we should, therefore will I pleasure in great successes when everything goes right. But that's not what we read in verse 10. I will pleasure in infirmities in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses, for Christ's sake, for when I am weak, then I am strong. I, uh, I could look at today as the weakest moment in my entire ministry. If it was about me. It's not. It's not. It's not about me. It's about God what God has done. And God is great. God is the one that needs to be exalted. God is the one that's at work. And a, and a for you Christian needs to be humble or needs to be humbled. <laughs> God is very capable of doing that. You ever pray, Lord, send me trials because I know they're so good for me. <laughs> or here's another prayer. Lord, humble me. Lord, humble me.
How about, Lord, find my all-sufficient grace in this particularly suited trial for me that, that I might realize that, that my grace is sufficient. It, it, it is constantly available. Amen? Amen. It, it is constantly that, that God, while he may not remove a thorn uh, in the flesh, he would not remove himself from the, from the, from the presence Though the pain may continue, the uh, supply of grace to endure the pain would abide and continue. My grace is sufficient. And, and, and God can reverse it so much that uh, we'll find out the greater story is that in our weakness, we are our, our strength because we exhibit only and we have only to exhibit God's strength. And so this, this lesson of humility rings out. Uh, Paul uh, gives this. And then he deals with motive and refusing to be a burden uh, physically, financially to these people so that they could cast a, a, a further straw. We, we get to this, this thought in this passage. If you want to be a for you Christian, uh, not only humble yourself, but then expend yourself uh, for others of your time, of your talent, of your treasure, to be a blessing, not a burden. This was the heartbeat of the Apostle Paul. Though he was uh, among the chiefest of apostles, he he acknowledged in this passage of Scripture that 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 he was nothing at all. He was a big zero. That's that's exactly what he said. That relates back to the first point of humility. But then he he just explains this for you as this means of his uh, passion uh, for others. And this is the passage that I'd like to have you just highlight or underline a word or two. But I speak the verse 14, the third time I'm ready to come unto you and will not be burdensome to you for I seek not yours but you wow how beautiful how beautiful the accusation had been given the dart had been sent and it was not only an attack at the apostle paul but it was a, an attack at the apostle paul's uh, friends if and if it didn't really hurt uh, him uh, uh, more so would be the attack upon the motives of Titus. And did Titus make a gain of you? Did he take it back? Did 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 anybody? Was this was this what that offering was all about? Was this what that money was all about? Was that was this what that situation was about? No, it was about God and 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 God alone. And so Paul had a, a for you uh, attitude that he would with passion help them and bless them. And seek uh, their good and, and, and their godliness. And, and so he, he, he wanted to make this clear. And, and, and he does in this passage of Scripture. Uh, in the situation that our church is in, I am blessed to read just part of the words. And the rest will come out later in the meeting. And I even have a copy for you. Um, it is written by several people, but signed by one. Uh, dear brother at the Congregation of Graceway, uh, Ramon. And Ramon, I have spent hours and hours uh, talking with. I actually knew him for years, uh, casually, and then now uh, very closely. And he writes to the congregation, Dear brothers and sisters, and I'd like you to listen to this in light of this for you uh, type of thing. I was asked to write this email on behalf of Graceway, the Graceway Elders. We have felt a burden to write to you in regarding our hearts and where the Spirit of the Lord has been leading us. We understand that the past weeks or even months have been difficult for most of you as you have been thinking through and discussing difficult upcoming decisions. We wanted to share with you an idea, which will be future in the, in the meeting, uh, in hopes of making this an easier transition for everyone and give you peace. We recognize that, and I'm talking, what's my three M's? Uh, uh, motive, uh, money, uh, morals. Uh, m we recognize that the property, well, that's where, uh, and I, I'm telling you, I have gone through these motions that we have printed up for you 
to talk about, discuss, and vote on if the body is willing. Um, I have been through number one, fine. You know, number two, glitch. <laughs> number two, hiccup. Number two, uh, number two, get count. Number two, run it back and have 57 revisions. Why? Because that one deal, deals with the assets, with the money. You know, the hard part. Uh, and 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 this is what this is what they wrote. Um, and, and so uh, we recognize that the property is important to most of you and rightfully so. So we wanted to be clear about where Graceway stands. Graceway has been blessed in so many ways, including financially. Our priority is not in the property or any kind of monetary gain. Rather, our priority is in bringing families along who desire to grow with us in the Lord. The, the letter goes on and we shall uh, have Dave read it later, but but it, it was a it was a beautiful letter regarding this thought and a beautiful illustration regarding this thought that they seek you not yours that, you know to go forward for God not not what what you have uh, we have considerations of 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 the 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 decision before us and and. They suggested a very pleasant way of doing that and not a, pain, a, a way that would remove a, a ton of the, of, of the pain of it and, and leave it in an amazing way, an amazing idea. But we'll unfold that in a minute. But, but this rang out to me and it rang out you know, to me from, from my heart that, that the, the desire is for you to go forward for the Lord. And not, not yours. This was the accusation against the Apostle Paul. Um, in fact, toward the end, well, we'll get there in a minute here. Uh, it, Paul did this with a passion. This is this is my passion. I seek not you, not yours, but you uh, to to be blessed. And with joy, I will gladly therefore spend. And be spent. So this 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 idea of this for you is just ringing out. I will gladly spend it all to bless, to encourage, to 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 shine the, the a godly motive uh, into this situation. And this was the this was the idea uh, for you. I will gladly spend and be spent for you. Um, and so through the passage. Uh, as as deep and as the context is, and you could study it, I'd encourage you to, um, but it, Paul is dealing with all the things that were going on and a lot of history and a lot of context of First and Second Corinthians. And, and Paul is spelling out his heart, his motive in humility and his means was this for you with passion, helping with passion and with joy serving a very gladly spend and be spent for you. Wow. We could ask uh, no more. Someone would slander those motives and slander and bring Titus in on it and, and this and that and a particular arrow even more painful of this thorn could be present here in this, uh, what Paul is saying, our ridiculous accusations uh, don't go there. The simple truth was that neither Paul nor his representatives had in any way defrauded the, the Corinthians. Wow, what a what a sweet smell there then. And, and that is a for you uh, type of smell. So humble, uh, expend. And then the last one here is has to do with a, a good godly result and, and it's it's the word uh, to edify or to build up uh, others. And this was the desire. And we, we read of this edifying, this building up, and, and it says there in verse 19, again, we think that we excuse ourselves to you, but we speak before God in Christ. This is way of bringing uh, authority and purity to the motive. I'm saying this before the Lord. Uh, and what does he say? But we do all things, dearly beloved, for your edifying. We do, we do all things to upbuild believers. Wow, isn't that, isn't that a refreshing goal of any decisions or any difficulties? Uh, look at verse 20 and think of 
uh, the sad end if the thorn, which would be a demonically charged messenger of Satan, had his way. Uh, think of this as a post-business meeting effect, okay? Verse 20, for I, I fear, uh, you know, this spiritual concern, and the, the, the letters keep going here are for you, edification, and for you, this spiritual concern of warning, um, lest there be debates and envyings and wraths and strifes and backbitings and whisperings and swellings and tumults. You'd think he was at a Baptist business meeting or two to get that list together. Wow. You know, uh, and, and so there's this warning. There's this caution that if the enemy gets in, corrupts these motives and corrupts these methods, that, that that's, the, that's the only thing that's left there is, is this mess where, where the only one that, that, that got his foot in the door was, was the enemy instead of, instead of God with this, this, this beautiful, refreshing breeze of for you, for you, to, to have others built up in the most holy faith. Wow. Uh, the thought, come grow with us, being red carpeted, rolled out from a particular body of believers nearby or from another body of believers as God leads. Um, and so, d dearly beloved, <laughs> let us be humble or God will humble you. <laughs> or God will humble me. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord. He will lift you up. The way it up is down. <laughs> Bend the knees. Bow the heart. Expand yourself. I will gladly do it. Expend and be spent. Not be burdensome. With the goal of people being built up in the Lord. To have sins confessed and things go forward so that there wouldn't be this continual uh, uh, carnality and sinfulness and cesspool of sin that the Corinthian believers morally and spiritually got into, but that there would be a, a, a going through that uh, into the calm waters of, of growth and blessing and building and edification. And this, this was the motive, is to grow forward. <laughs> Uh, in the Lord. That was it. And, and to build them up, to build up others. And the result would be the, the building up of the body of the Lord, which uh, wonderfully is bigger than us. Amen? It's bigger than us. It, it is gloriously, um, wonderfully bigger than all of us. And so we take a few strokes here today. Uh, the flesh might say, Let's just not listen to the director. <laughs> See how this goes. Take a few paddle swipes the wrong way even, you know. Take a few shots of the flesh uh, instead of prayerful, uh, okay, Lord, what wilt thou have us to do and, and to be directed by the Lord? This is, this is what's on my heart. This is the message for this moment. Uh, we thought this moment might be last week, David's covid and Mother's Day thought differently. <laughs> and here we are today. And so let's pray and, and go forward here together. And we invite all of you to stay. Let's let's pray together. Lord, we thank you for this this day and this moment. Lord, we thank you for this scripture. And we pray that it would be wonderfully applied to our hearts, Lord. And and Father, applied to our our setting, Lord, applied to our day, Lord. No greater desire than for others to walk in truth, to come to know truth, and to grow in that truth and exhibit Christ-likeness, Lord. Uh, Paul travailed in birth until Christ would be formed in each of them and this desire to, to edify, Lord. So use the trials, use the thorns, Lord, uh, the difficulties, Lord, and, and above and beyond and, and through it all, flood your amazing, all-sufficient grace, Lord. Purify the motive, help us deal with the money, and help us, Lord, uh, be clear with the morals, Lord, that would be godly and spiritual 
for only then can you really bless uh, your people. And so we come to you in Jesus' name, and we thank you. Amen.